everybody, and welcome into another brand new episode of Change Corner right here on CUTV. As always, I'm your host, Tom Caton. First and foremost, thank you all for setting aside some time to watch today's show. As you know, uh, it's my farewell season. It really means a lot to me. Side note, if you haven't watched the season premiere episode from about two weeks ago, please go do that before watching this episode today. But anyway, uh, let's get on with today's show. So as we film today's episode, you might be aware that today is Valentine's Day. One of the worst holidays of the year, if you ask me personally. <laughs> Unless you're in a relationship, then this holiday might hold some significance from your point of view. But anyways, uh, Valentine's Day is a holiday that's been observed for more than 1,500 years, believe it or not. I'm in shock to see a holiday observed for so long, and I still find myself single every year for it. <laughs> but I don't know. Every Valentine's Day, I just usually take myself out for a romantic dinner and I'll buy myself some roses or chocolates on the side. But I don't know, maybe it's a Leo thing to constantly treat yourself. <laughs> but anyways, I decided to look up some fun facts regarding this lovey-dovey holiday in hopes that it would change my point of view on it. I don't know about that just yet, but we'll see. <laughs> so let's go ahead and look at those. As previously stated, Valentine's Day has been observed for more than 1,500 years or 1,527 to be exact. The first ever Valentine's Day was celebrated in 15th century Paris, France. More than 145 million cards are exchanged each Valentine's Day. Candy message hearts were originally created as medical lo lozenges, believe it or not. In 1847, Boston pharmacist Oliver Chase invented a machine to simplify the process of making lozenges and then started to create Neko candy wafers. Continuing on, more than $1 billion is spent on chocolate for Valentine's Day every year. The term lovebirds is more than just an expression to describe a couple in love. It is, it is the common name for, I'm going to try to say this here, agapornis bird, if that's how you say it. I'm not sure. And finally, more than 250 million roses are grown each year alone to be sold during the Valentine's season. And after reading all those fun facts, I still don't find Valentine's Day to be fun. <laughs> But either way, however depends that you look at it. But anyways, we'll continue on with the show and move into our next segment. Let's go ahead and look at some hot topics. Why don't we? We spent too much time talking about Valentine's Day. <laughs> so let's continue on. All right. So first up, kicking off hot topics this week is shocking news that M&Ms have suspended their iconic spokes candies indefinitely. In a recent response made by the company, they have stated their colorful candy mascots have become a quote, too polarized for Americans to handle these days. The ubiquitous chocolate characters, which have been the face of M&Ms for years now, did not say anything to cause this controversy to start. However, they did become the focus of a partisan backlash after the brand, owned by Mars Incorporated, made a number of stylistic tweaks to its cast of spokes candies last year to become more inclusive. Commentators began to criticize the campaign, including Fox News host Tucker Carlson, who devoted multiple segments on his talk show about the candy. Furthermore, the company stated their spokes candies are on an indefinite pause at the moment, and actress Maya Rudolph will become the new temporary face of M&M's. Whoever would have thought that such controversy would come from candy? But next up, emo pop band Panic at the Disco has announced their band is breaking up after nearly Two decades in the limelight, first formed in 2004, Brendan Yuri, the band's frontman and last remaining original member, made the announcement in an Instagram post on January 24th. The post also stated that its upcoming European tour for the 2022 album Viva Las Vengeance will be the band's last tour ever. In the post, Yuri also announced that his wife is pregnant with their first child. More than a dozen of Panic! at the Disco songs have made the Billboard Hot 100 songs, including High Hopes at number 4 in 2019 and I Write Sins, Not Tragedies at number 7 in 2006. In the end, fans are utterly devastated by this sudden announcement. Next up, this year's nominations for the 95th Annual Academy Awards were recently announced. The entire list of films, actors and actresses, and everything else related to the movie-making business were announced by the Academy on January 23rd. Everyone is hoping all the right films are able to claim a coveted Golden Academy Award, or an Oscar as it is commonly referred to. Side note, did you know that every Oscar award costs about $400 to make? Probably costs more now with the inflation rate having gone up, <laughs> but 
For the full list of this year's nominees, be sure to check out the Academy's website and make sure you mark your calendars as the 95th Annual Academy Awards will premiere on Sunday, March 12th, beginning at 8 p.m. Continuing on with hot topics, the ever so famous Titanic film is sailing its way, pun intended, back into movie theaters for a limited time to celebrate its 25th anniversary. We know the whole story about Titanic, and if you don't, you must have been living under a rock for quite some time. But this 1997 film, directed by James Cameron, stars Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet in an epic, action-packed romance set against, against the ill-fated maiden voyage of the RMS Titanic, the pride and joy of the White Star Line, and at the time, the largest moving object ever built. Unfortunately, this unsinkable ship met her early demise on the night of April 14, 1912, when she struck an iceberg and sunk in the ice-cold waters of the North Atlantic a few hours later, and ultimately carried over 1,500 people to their untimely death. Technically speaking, the 25th anniversary of this film was to be celebrated last year, but complications beyond anyone's control prevented it from happening in the first place. If you would like to relive the almost four-hour epic tale of Titanic, please check your local movie theaters for showtimes. But that does conclude this installment of Hot Topics. Be sure you tune into the next episode for another installment. But I know we just got started, so we're going to step aside for a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Kate's Corner on CUTV. Are you looking for student housing that is convenient, fits your budget, and promotes independent living? Look no further than Penn West California's Upper Campus Student Community at Falcon Village. At Falcon Village, you have three spacious floor plans to choose from, all with guaranteed private bedrooms and many with private bathrooms. Our community provides you fantastic amenities such as a 24-7 fitness center, convenience store, sand volleyball, and saltwater swimming pool. All apartments are fully furnished and have full kitchens and laundry. Utilities, internet, parking, recreation, and events all included. We provide you an all-inclusive experience that can't be beat. Schedule a tour and learn more today at BalkanVillage.com. Live here, live well. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We are currently in the month of February, and this month is recognized as Black History Month. Such an important month out of the whole entire year, if you ask me. Because not only can so much information about Black History be learned this month, there are also plenty of reasons to celebrate Black History Month as well. Our on-campus Black Student Union, or BSU as it is commonly referred to, has many events scheduled for this month to learn and celebrate. Now, I have some members joining me today to tell us more. From the BSU, please welcome Naya and Alexis. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you for having thank us. You. I know we were supposed to film this past Thursday, but we had some technical difficulties. Fortunately, we were able to fix them. But before we get anything, Naya and Alexa, would you like to take a quick moment and introduce yourselves? Mm -hmm. So I am Naya Alderman. I am the Public Relations Coordinator for the Black Student Union. And I'm Alexis Wright. I'm the Vice President of the Black Student Union. So I know a lot of us on campus know what BSU is, but there might be some people out there who might not know what it is. So do you want to take quick moment and just explain what BSU is and what it's all about. Of course, absolutely. So the Black Student Union pretty much is a safe space for our black students here on campus, but we are open for anybody to come join. How I see it is pretty much it's a learning experience. So when you come to our meetings, it's not just, oh, it's distinctly for mm -hmm. this demographic of students. It's for everybody. And when you're coming into our meetings, it's honestly, we're having fun, listening to music, and honestly, it's a learning experience where you're learning perspectives and also you get to learn your perspective. Okay. Alexis, anything you want to add on to that or deny I do? Good job summing it up. <laughs> it really is just about us learning each other's cultures and just being together as, like, unified. Mm -hmm. I like that. And so... I know we're about halfway through the month of February. Some events did happen already, but there's still plenty of events that mm -hmm. are scheduled for the rest of the month. Do you want to talk about some of the events that have occurred already and then how the turnout was for that and then explain some of the events that are forthcoming? Mm -hmm. So we recently, our last meeting was the Black Jeopardy. That was a completely fun meeting. It almost took up, we went, almost went over time. That's how fun it was. It was just chaotic in a fun way because everybody just was so eager 
to win, even though we did have mm-hmm. cash prizes, but everyone was eager. I was say, who wouldn't get competitive? Exactly, for that. it was very competitive <laughs> in a fun, respectful manner. Uh, we recently we did vision boards and vibes. So pretty much, we pretty much talked about our goals and goals we want to have set for us for 2023 regarding school, personal, anything. That was a very good meeting where we all just came together and you know talked mm-hmm. about our aspirations. Okay. And I know, um, so like I said, we still have some events planned. Um, what events particularly are scheduled? I know you have some this week and mm-hmm. all that. If you want to explain those. This Thursday, we're actually going to be doing our Black Oscars. Okay. And the purpose of that is just to honor all the members that participated in our showcase last semester and just give them their flowers, their awards, tell them how much we appreciate them, and even opening up to like the members who weren't a part of it and who supported us, mm-hmm. just giving their flowers and letting them know, like, we appreciate you and we're thankful for y'all. Okay. And were there any events that you were particularly excited about, some that happened, or are there any ones that you're excited for that are upcoming? I think I'm excited for our black market. So pretty much our black market, it's pretty much us recognizing any student brands we have on campus and just letting them promote themselves and also just Spending some money, honestly, <laughs> give some new I merch. remember attending that uh, last year with Viana, and it was so incredible to see how students have their own businesses and still be a college student. I find that difficult. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they do it. They're able to balance it, so I would give them credit where credit's due. And it's just so incredible to see. And there's a lot of student-run businesses here. I didn't think mm-hmm. there would be that many, but there is so many here. Mm-hmm. And it's just amazing to see this, support them. That's obviously what the whole market is for. Um, any one, any particular business out there that you guys like, or do we expect to see some businesses that were here last year? We're honestly expecting some new businesses okay. that will be featured in our market. Um, I'm honestly excited for everyone. I, I really need some new hoodies and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm looking forward I can't to. wait. When when does that market happen? February twenty third. February twenty third. Okay. All right. And then so it's more of a personal question. Why do you think that Black History Month is so important for people to learn? Stuff not just stuff that happened in the past and stuff that's going on now, but other historical events that can happen in the future. Why do you think it's important for people to learn about all this? I feel like it's just important to hear black stories directly from black people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with Black History Month, the focus is on the people telling those stories. So like they can be interpreted in a way that's true to the person and like true to their experiences. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the main focus is just like focusing on who's telling the story, why they're telling the story, how they're telling it, what happened, like their experiences and trying to understand it from their point of view. Mm Naya, would you like to add on to that? Uh, she nailed everything that I was thinking about. But honestly, just to add a little bit more, um, honoring our culture, you know, food, clothes, dance, everything. And just with even just seeing, like, the black representation we have and just seeing that and just us winning is mm-hmm. just... Because I know, yeah. like... For me, growing up, we hear about the stuff in history class and all that, but I feel like you only really hear, it's like a one-sided story and you're not hearing it from your point of view. And I think it's just so incredible. I look, I know I take some personal time, I look back at all the stuff that has happened and I know it's just extremely important to learn off of that and hopefully turn it around and hopefully build for a better future, so hopefully you can agree with that because I just think it's important to do all that. But um, so I know for people that want to stay in touch with BSU, I know you have uh, social media. Everyone's on social media yeah. nowadays. Um, so how can people, if they just want to stay up to date generally with BSU? Well, you can always join our email list because obviously we do have our Penn West Cal BSU page where everyone now is like, known to just go on that but if you're not really into social media we do table here in the tally here and there not every time because we have a very busy schedule Mm -hmm. uh so that and also just our email list if you 
check your emails regularly. I know I do. I always look forward to seeing their DSP message. And before we wrap up this interview, any final words you would like to say? Definitely get people to come out to upcoming events. I would just say, like, just, just feel free to come out. We're really just here to just have fun, get to know each other, and just build an environment where everyone is comfortable and everyone can just express themselves. So don't, like, feel any fear or any, like, oh, no, just, just come on. Mm -hmm. Just come on. Come okay, on. okay. Honestly, if you see us, just say what's up. Say hey. <laughs> <laughs> come on over. Just come I, over. So no, I attended a few events last year with Fiona. I will say this. You, you guys know how to definitely make everyone feel welcome and obviously and ultimately throw a party. You guys always have such a good time every time you throw an event. And it makes me feel welcomed, which I am grateful for. And it's just always so much fun to see. It's just nice to get a little other piece and taste of culture. And I think that's the most important thing and it's just always fun to do all that. But Nine Alexis, thank you so much for stopping by to inform us and all that. Thank you. Thank you. But if you would like to attend any upcoming Black History Month events or stay up to date with the Black Student Union in general, please follow their Instagram page at penwestcal underscore BSU or as Nine said, you can join their email list. But uh, there are plenty of events coming up as we continue to celebrate Black History Month for the rest of this month. But we are going to take another commercial break, so stay tuned. You're watching Kate's Corner on CTV. We'll be back in a Worried about your friend, but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's so good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Our next segment is one of my new favorites, Way Back, Look Back. I first introduced this new and exclusive segment on the last show, so go watch the last show if you have not yet. But uh, you'll see me explain in full detail what this segment really means. But the premise of this segment is to look back at past memories made on my show over the last nine seasons, since this is my actual real final season overall. <laughs> but I just wanted to devote some time and ponder on old memories since there are nearly 50 episodes to watch in its entirety of Kane's Corner. Anyways, for today's installment of Way Back Look Back, I decided to look back at some of my fashion over the years. Not trying to sound too cocky, but I consider myself a fashionista down here in Media Suite. At least that's what I tell myself or have heard from some people over the years. I've worn so many different outfits on this show, and I thought it was necessary to go look back at what I've worn in the early days on the show. And I'm not saying my fashion was ever bad to begin with, but it did become more polished as the years went on. <laughs> Lastly, I don't know why I changed my hair color so often either, but <laughs> you'll see it here in this. But without further ado, let's take a way back look back at my fashion over the years. Take a look. first guest on the very first I know, show. right? I mean, it's just an honor. <laughs> I was like, I had to have a good friend be a coach, and I had to have another good friend be the first guest. So, <laughs> um, so first off, can you want you to tell us a little bit so about I do have friends here, Dalton's still with us, and now joined by Devin Garina, knows everything about these movies. Yeah. Hi, Devin. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, if you haven't... Uh, seen already. I have a new hairdo. I was tired of uh, brown and black hair and wanted to put that theory of if blondes have more fun to the test. So far, so good. We'll see how uh, it keeps on going. I've been in school for seven weeks now. It's absolutely crazy to believe how extremely fast time is flying by here. I think because since there's so much going on, that's why time is flying by so fast. While the calendar is saying we are technically and officially in the season of fall, 
the weather outside is still very, very unpredictable. So well, that's the game. I think I won, so I win no matter what. <laughs> and uh, I'll treat myself to a Ferrari or something. Or you can go to Subway that with too. a drive through <laughs> Doug, we'll go to Subway after this. <laughs> All right. And I'm still trying to decide whether or not to consider this uh, part of season two or a part of season three. Um, but after some time and uh, after a unanimous decision, this is season three of Kane's Corner. Very excited to be back to host another season. And it's crazy, almost one year ago, I just started hosting this show. Arthur, hi, Nikki. Hi. Nice of you to join me today. Thanks for taking time out of your schedule to be here. Um, so you work up in the SAI business office here in the tally. So what is what exactly is your main role up there in the office? So I'm and staying safe and doing whatever they can to help stop the spread of coronavirus. Whatever you have to do, if you have to wear a mask, you're wearing your gloves or your social dis social distancing, whatever you have to do. And uh, I know it's a little tough for us at CUTV here. We're doing our best. Uh, we're all staying home for the fall semester, but hopefully for the spring semester, we can all return in person and do what we do best. It's nice to see that uh, things are kind of getting back to a little bit in person. Um, but as you can see, we're still filming uh, the show virtually via Zoom. Uh, we all love Zoom. No, not really. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, we're not back in the studio just yet. But I really hope we can get back in the studio if it allows it sometime before the semester is over. Today, I don't have my evergreen colored couch and uh, love seat with me today. Uh, the rickety stage you always see me on, I miss setting foot on that as well. Um, Really, I did miss everything that there was about filming a show in the studio. But to be in the studio one last time for this farewell show, I'm very appreciative and grateful of the opportunity. What? Surprised to see me? You might be a little shocked to see me here. Uh, I returned so suddenly and unexpectedly after my show ended this past May. Everyone thought I was done, even I myself thought I was done. Uh, but after some careful consideration and maybe even some peer pressure, I decided to return to Cal U for graduate school. I'm currently going for my master's degree in business administration with a concentration in management, so wish me luck on that. <laughs> of course, I could not come back to Cal U and not return to the media suites where I now hold the position of graduate assistant so I can take some of the workload off of Gary's hands. So it uh, looks like my show really didn't have to end after all, just took a little break. So all that farewell season stuff and farewell show stuff this past May, that can all be disregarded, at least until 2023. <laughs> all right, well, let's just move into our next interview segment. I am joined in the studio uh, with two students from uh, Cal Youth Theater program to talk about their upcoming shows, Belle and Ella. Hi, guys. Hello. <laughs> So nice of you to join me in the studio today. Like, as we were saying, it's just so good to be back mm -hmm. on campus, be in the studio. I know you guys said this is your first time down in this area. So what mm -hmm. do you think of the studio down here? Everyone, please welcome Cole McGlumpsey from ELF. Together. Together. There we go. <laughs> Johnny, I'll give you some slack here. But uh, Cole, it's good to see you Thank you again. So Thank you so much. Um, it's good to see you too. Yes, definitely. I know. Last time you were here was back in season two. You were talking Everybody, please welcome my very good friend, Kimmy Rhodes. Hello. Hi, Kimmy. So nice to see you. It's so again. great to see you, too. It's great to be back. Definitely. Yeah. So as I said, this is your fourth appearance here. <coughs> yes. It's crazy to believe that. Yes, it is. Um, I, I only thought it was my third, but <laughs> you just informed me it was my fourth. So. It should be your fourth. Talk about that mm -hmm. in a second. I'm, I know. Uh, and it's funny, three of the appearances have been all during a season premiere, <laughs> oh. <laughs> believe it or not. Okay, cool. But um, I know you always hold that very first uh, special honor, being the very first guest ever on yes. my show from three years ago. Yes, that was... <laughs> Almost three years what? ago. I'll say, before we get started, 
I want to look so good on camera today. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I would say you, try, Professor Pinkham. I was me with me. Uh, the number one rule of like a television show: don't be seen in the same outfit twice. <laughs> so that's my personal rule. Yeah. So I had to go out and buy new clothes. <laughs> I'm a little stressed trying to find something to wear this morning, so. But, uh, hi, Jordan. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, so, before we get started, yeah. do you just want to briefly introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah. Well, hello. My name is Jordan Williams. I'm the president of Women United. I'm a communication studies major, and I have a minor in marketing, and I'm from Philadelphia, PA. So As here. always, I'm your host, Tom Caton. Today is the second to last episode of season seven, which means after today's episode, there's only one more episode until the season seven semester finale. Uh, then we'll leave for summer break. I'll be back to relaunch season eight in the fall. It's all very exciting, and I can't wait to end another great semester. Hi, everybody, and welcome into another brand new episode of a brand new season of Caton's Corner right here on CUTV. As always, I'm your host, Tom Caton, and allow me to welcome you all into the season eight premiere of the show. Like I said, to me, it's very surreal to even announce those words. Uh, if you were to tell me the show would have lasted this long from the season one premiere over three and a half years ago, I probably wouldn't believe you. <laughs> I'm still joined with Johnny, but also joining me is our other good friend, John Sape. John. I love the costume, by the way. <laughs> I appreciate it, you know. A lot, of, a lot of time and effort went into this, you know. That's all that matters. But uh, definitely, so John, you joined, it was me, you and Lily that walked through this year. Unfortunately, Lily couldn't be here today because of her schedule. But what were your thoughts about walking through the hall uh, this year? It was, uh, As you can see, things have returned to normal here in the studio because my last show uh, was my annual Halloween episode. So if you have yet to watch it, please don't hesitate and go watch it. It was definitely a show for the record books. And I must say this past Halloween show was probably one of my favorite Halloween shows I've ever done in a while. Hi everybody and welcome into another brand new episode of Kane's Corner right here on CUTV. As always, I'm your host, Tom Caton. Not only are you all tuning in to another new episode of Caton's Corner, you are also tuning in to the season eight finale as you saw in the intro video there. It's a real And that concludes today's installment of Way Back, Look Back. Seeing that whole video makes me realize two things. I've been doing this show for a long time, <laughs> longer than four years, I might add, so what it feels like, and that my passion game really has improved over the years. I'll give myself a pat on the back for that. <laughs> but anyways, hope you enjoyed watching that. There will be another installment of this segment on the next episode and every episode, in fact, this season. So be sure to tune in and get ready to stroll down memory lane with me several times. <laughs> But other than that, we'll step aside for another commercial break. everybody will introduce my next guest they are from the theater department to talk about the upcoming theater show that's gonna be happening in just a couple of weeks so we'll introduce them we have Noah and Emma hello everyone hello Hi. how are you I'm good thanks so much for being here thanks I know for you yes thank all you have so busy schedules right now so it's good that you're able to come on by to talk about the upcoming play so, but uh, before we get into that, would you both like to briefly introduce yourselves? Sure. Um, my name is Noah Kendall. I am a senior here at Cal or Penn West, California. I am a pre-K to four education major with a musical theater minor. And yeah, this is going to be my last show here at Cal. Uh, and yeah, very excited and very excited to be here. So thank you for having us. Yeah. Hi, I'm Emma Jones. I'm a senior theater major with concentration in performance and design entertainment technology. 
Um, I'm so sad but elated to be doing Godspell for our last show. It's going to be quite the musical, and you don't want to miss it. I know, we can't wait until all the stuff come out. But uh, first and foremost, do you want to explain? I personally have never heard of Godspell, but for and other people out there that might not know what it is, do you want to explain what the show is all about? So Godspell is a retelling of parables from the Bible, but it is told in a way that's through games and uh, fun characters that are thrown in and all intertwined through a plethora of different music. We've got rock songs, ballads, we've got some pop dance songs in there. It's a whole variety of different music, but it all tells the parables that are within the Bible and all really these stories about community acceptance and all basically leading up to Jesus's crucifixion mm -hmm. and Jesus's Last Supper. And yeah, it goes through all that. It follows Jesus telling all his disciples and it also follows the betrayal of Judas. And I play Judas in the show. So it goes through all those different things and then it's all these disciples just basically spreading community love and light throughout the whole show and okay. really the words and messages that Jesus spread, but also just any words of affirmation that anyone can live with throughout okay. their life. Okay. And then I know like behind the scenes action, rehearsing, you have rehearsal today after we finish up here. <laughs> Is it stressful? How has rehearsal been going so far? Uh, it's been a quick process. Uh, we usually have a few months to put a show together and we've only had about three weeks with our scripts and our vocal parts and everything. So stitching everything together is quick, but it's coming. Each day it gets better and that's like the joy of theater for us, just for playing sure. with it. And so who is playing what character? I know Noah, you just said you're playing Judas Emma. Who are you, who are you going to be playing? Um, so the way Godspell works, our on ensemble of disciples is basically all of these people playing themselves. In some versions, some, actor, or some directors would prefer to use the previous actors' names, which are the titles of the characters. Mm -hmm. So I play Morgan and sing the song Turn Back, Oh Man, but I'm Emma in the show. So it's kind of fun. I love that. And the only other named characters that we're using in the show are Jesus, who is played by Aiden Sheik. He is a freshman at Cal, and then Judas. Uh, and I play John the Baptist as well. It's mm -hmm. a split role. So those are the only named ones, and everyone else, like Emma said, is uh, either we have how many? Sw uh, we have four, four swings. swings, and then we have other disciples that all play their own names, but all play the original cast versions of those tracks. So okay. if they sang one song in the original version, that person sings that song, but we don't use their names. So we have two named characters, but other than that, we're all just Emma Cool, whoever is in there. I guess it's a little easy to using your own name, so I think that that's easy. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty simple. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Bringing ourselves to life. And a lot of the show is just kind of conversational and fun, and it kind of is just like these real people in the show. And even throughout the show, our director, Michelle Pagin, she said a lot that these characters are so much rooted in ourselves mm -hmm. and not as much as you're playing someone on stage, you're playing yourself, but just a heightened version of that. So it's been nice to have this show that is so... I don't know, conversational and personal, be able uh -huh. to be just, hey, Emma, on stage we say, great job, Emma, nice <laughs> job there, nice job, except for Jesus, and I don't get any praise saying Noah, but <laughs> other than that, it's nice to have a personal touch to right. it. Right, and I know show and ticket information, because the show opening night is next Thursday, mm -hmm. which is crazy to believe, but uh, I do want to explain show information, ticket information, all that fun stuff. Sure. Yeah. So you can go online for tickets. Tickets are twelve dollars. Twelve dollars for adults. Free for students at the door. So just bring your Cal ID. On show day, just show up, bring your Cal ID, and you get them for free. And then eight dollars for children and seniors. You can go online and buy those at Show Ticks for you. That Show T I X four and the letter U dot com slash events slash Cal Theater. Theater spelled T-H-E-A-T-R-E. -E. I can't believe I remembered all that. <laughs> <laughs> and the phone number will be right here. <laughs> we'll have that all graphed. That'll be <laughs> over there. Oh, is that, that should be an easy part. You have to memorize your lines all the time. No, yeah, I, I've been memorizing too much. That's been too much. <laughs> and I know before we started filming, uh, it's happening in Blaney Theater, the black box. It yes. Said, it said it's the first musical since 2018 I believe we believe yeah. 2018 yeah. yeah we've had plays down there which this year was the first that we've had plays back mm -hmm. in there these this is the first year of shows or first two semesters with shows down there first musical since 2018 mm -hmm. and it's funny the last show that 
I've done and Emma did was our first show and how Emma and I met was our first year show. We do all those shows down in the little black box Blaney Theater. So now we're ending it full circle, the first musical in there since 2018. Okay. It's really okay. full circle moment. I love that. And I know with uh, Blaney and the black box, it's more like of a personal setting yeah. in a way because you're, the seats are it's like circled around the stage, mm -hmm. whereas the main stage, here you have your stage and then all your seats. Yeah. So like, I, I feel like it's a little bit more of a fun setting. You get to see everyone come and go as they please with the show. Yeah. Going on. But uh, so what are you most excited for with this show coming up? I actually love that you brought up that we're in the black box. It's so intimate and having that thrust stage is what it's called when you have an audience on three sides. Um, it's so entertaining, especially my character gets to interact quite a bit with the audience. So um, be prepared if you come see the show to like have a little bit of fun and interact with us because we'll be pulling people up and getting everyone involved and it's fun for everyone. So that's my favorite part. I love that. Noah, any favorite exciting parts for you? There's so much about it. I just love this show and I, I know that some people go into the show and don't know how you feel about it because it's religion and some people are so into it because it's religious, which is awesome for those people. And some people get turned away if they're not. And being someone kind of in the middle of all these things, it's so exciting for me because it's just about music and love and community and the actual community that we've built within this cast is really the most thing I'm just so excited about. Each, even just running now, without a fully perfected show, it still is just so special and so emotional. And for having this be our last show, I'm just so excited for a farewell that feels so justified and so fun. And I, I'm just excited to have fun and hopefully have other people come and have fun with us. <laughs> Had a blunder with them like, that's okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Um, but I know I just want to commend you and everyone else that worked on the show because first of all, it's so, it has to be stressful, difficult times maintaining and balancing. You have your school life and then this theater department life. And I know Noah, you student teaching this semester as well, have you were telling me it's just this big jumble, but you're able to maintain it. Do you find it sometimes difficult to maintain at times yeah. when doing all this? I'm in just like senior thesis and some finishing up some classes and I um, assistant teach the scene painting class over in Steel Hall. But on top of a show, like our days are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. almost Monday through Friday sometimes, but Monday through Thursday most of the time. And, but Noah was student teaching. That's a completely different <laughs> that, world. That takes it to another level. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a lot. It's <laughs> like having a full-time job and then also having to be like, oh, I'm going to do these things that I'm passionate about, but these things that you're passionate about are a lot. So right. a lot right. on top of a lot gets a lot. If I didn't love it as much, I wouldn't be able to do it. But mm -hmm. the people that are in it and just doing these things and performing and being able to create something for the audience makes it so worth it. It is tough to eat in between. It is tough. I get an hour. Usually I'm never in my room until late at night. So it's tough, but it is worth it at the end. Mm -hmm. And doing things like this and going back and just seeing people's perceptions of it really just makes it feel like you're doing it for a reason and it makes it like, okay, all of it's gonna be worth it. Come on, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like everything's worth it and for a reason, which just makes it a fun experience. I just have to keep remembering that whenever I'm exhausted every day. Really, sometimes, even like as we're filming right now, you see, have blunders like that and that's okay, the show goes on. Right. <laughs> but so before we wrap up this interview, any final words? Out of you would like to say, definitely get people to come out to the show next week. Godspells for everyone. I just encourage everyone to give it a shot. I don't think a lot of people talk to the theater majors because there's a whole lot of stigma around theater kids and what we're like, but we're just people <laughs> and we happen to sing and dance sometimes, <laughs> which is kind of creative <laughs> and maybe silly in some moments, but it's there's something for everyone and I hope you give us a chance. Come on out. Yeah, it's free. I love that. <laughs> right now, we always i think everyone is always in these stressful times and i think that having opportunities for live performances and live theater in general is just such a crucial thing for people to allow themselves to step away from their real lives for a second and let themselves be fully immersed into an experience like this and if you're going to be fully immersed into any type of show whether that's a musical a play uh improv show whatever Godspell is a perfect show for that. It's just about love and light and acceptance and all the things that go on between relationships. And it's a learning moment, but it's also just a moment 
to allow yourself to just feel for a little bit and come and enjoy yourself and have fun. There's not always always so many opportunities to have fun. This is one. So come have fun with us. Come enjoy yourself, and I promise you won't be dis disappointed. I love that. And how you're saying Godspell, it's not really, you don't have to really be religious to come and watch it and enjoy it. And who knows? In the end, like you said, you might like it anyway. You sure, yeah. So, and I know it's a little bit of a full circle moment for me as well with how you're saying this is your last show doing and this is my second last season. <laughs> I've had a final right. season before. <laughs> Never, for people, real. people that know me know what happened there. <laughs> but um, it's literally, like you said, full circle moment. We start out somewhere and you get to end in that same place. I think it's just, it just even makes it even more special for yourself. I but Noah, Emma, thank you so much for coming on by to talk about the show for next week. Thank, thank you, you so, so much so for much. having us. Thank you. So as Noah and Emma said, definitely go and see Godspell. Uh, opening night is next week, Thursday, February 23rd. Show runs through the February 26th show times. All that information can definitely be found on their Instagram page, Cal Theater PW, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that and Facebook. Definitely if you want to... Uh, <laughs> stay up to date with general or definitely with the show coming up next week definitely go see it or uh, for tickets show ticks for you dot com uh -huh. slash cow theater all that fun stuff yeah, slash yeah. Events, afterwards slash cow theater. or you could uh, call the steel hall box office too yep. literally all that stuff will be in the graphic on the page Perfect. <laughs> oh, that God. way but other than that we'll step aside for another commercial break Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? Why? My. Oh. <laughs> oh you can. back everyone it's almost near the end of the show and you know what that means it's time to play a game joining me for today's game segment is pam and noah hello hi tom hello. Hey. pam before we get started i want to point out this is your seventh appearance on the show today wow so you are holding the record for most guest appearances okay. and noah this is your very first time on the show <laughs> know, <it's> so, special. <laughs> so and i know i hold the record for most host appearances <laughs> 48 <laughs> <laughs> but anyways today's game is special and i decided to bring it back again this season i first introduced it last season and since the show is basically all about me i need a show that's basically all a game that's also about me as well but let's play a quick round quick round i cannot talk today <laughs> of higher or lower tom edition so here is how the game plays i'm going to read a statement with a corresponding number that relates to me the first number you will see is not I repeat, not the actual number, and you'll have to guess if you think the actual number is higher or lower than the number you'll see on the screen. For example, I could say the number of pairs of socks I own is 20. If you think that actual number is higher or lower than 20, you'll say so, and then I will reveal the actual number on the next graphic and see if you are correct. And I know I have more than 20 pairs of socks, <laughs> yeah. so if you would say higher, that would be that. But all right, well, let's go ahead and play first one. The number of button-down shirts I own, do you think the actual number is higher or lower than 36? Higher, for sure. Higher, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I might say lower. <coughs> lower. Well, Noah is correct in this yeah. one, higher. I have 42. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of shirts. I, 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 I had to count just to make sure that I, I thought I could think of them at the top of my head, but I actually had to go. If you know me, you know my closet is a department store when you really look at it. Yeah. <laughs> Including this one, 42. Actually, I think now I'm up to like 43 or 44. I did some shopping over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, next one. Okay, the number of metal water bottles that I own, do you think the actual number is higher or lower than 10? Um, lower. Lower. Yeah, I'm going to say lower, too. That's an awful including, lot of storage. Including this one I have here. <laughs> 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 
but you're both correct. It's lower. I only have four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Some people have a bunch of those kind of cups, and me, I just think they take up too much space. I don't yes, know why do. you would want that many. I think we have a cabinet at my house. Literally, it's just devoted to cups we've gathered over the years, and we're just too stingy to get rid of them. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I feel I like, like them. Because I mean. Some of them have some memorable stories to go with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think like the one I have is when I played soccer and I was like six or seven. <laughs> I was like, and that was 15 years ago <laughs> and we still have that. Vintage. So, all right. And next one, the number of pairs of glasses that I own, do you think the number is higher or lower than three? Higher. 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 Correct. I have six <laughs> pairs of glasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one, the pair I have on now, I have another black pair, mm -hmm. my clear glasses. Um, I have a pair of yellow glasses. I don't know why. I've never, I think I've worn them once, and I don't know. And then I have my prescription sunglasses Three. and another one. I know I tried to wear regular sunglasses, but when you're blind like me, that's not a good look. Yeah. <laughs> I think those yellow ones would have looked nice with what you had on today. Maybe. maybe. You better... <laughs> Gonna break those out. Spice it up. <laughs> they say they're in my they're in my drawer at my apartment. So I I don't really have that many yellow outfits though. Mm. I mean I have my sunflower shirt, yeah. but it's a pop of color. There we go. I'm gonna yeah. go with that next time. <laughs> All right, next one. The number of bottles of cologne I own. Do you think the number is higher or lower than twenty eight? Oh. oh my. And you know some people have seen my cologne collection. I really need to take out an insurance loan on it or something. Mm. Well, based on what you said, I'm going to say higher. Yeah, higher. me too. Higher. Well, actually, that's incorrect. I no. Have lower. Oh. I, actually, I only have 18 bottles of cologne. 18. That's oh, so no. many. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite? I'd be like picking out a favorite child, but I don't have one. So that's okay. <laughs> so we'll pick out one. Um, I'd probably have to go with my, my very first bottle of designer cologne I ever bought, Jimmy Choo. Because um, I still have it. That bottle is like at least three or four years old. <laughs> and I figured I only I only use Jimmy on special occasions. Jimmy. <laughs> That's what I call him, Jimmy. <laughs> but I think that one's special to me because it's just the very first one that I, I think it was really the first ever designer item that I ever bought. And now <laughs> me, I, you know me, I have way too many now. But also Jimmy, Jimmy's a little expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I like him. How much, how much was Jimmy? He was 95 <gasps> before tax. <laughs> 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 oh. Or the one time I bought, I dropped like $180 on two bottles of cologne. But Damn. buy it now Damn. when you don't have that many bills to worry about. That's what I say. <laughs> That's what I say. But do you have any perfume that you like? No, actually, I just, just do whatever I like think smells good. <laughs> I know. I say you can Bath and Body Works. I know they're expensive. Oh, that ain't good there. <laughs> I have a lot of those. Stuff. <laughs> it, it shows that you have money. If you got Bath and Body Works, you have money. <laughs> but and all right, last one here. The number of pets that I've owned over the years. Do you think the actual number is higher or lower than fourteen? Wow. Uh, mm, think whoa, my whole childhood oh. up until right now. I'm twenty three. Lower. Wait. Lower. Oh. Wait, where did you live? <laughs> <laughs> Up north. No. I can't disclose my actual location. Oh, yeah, we're great. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, Higher or lower than 14? Pam says lower. Lower? Lower. They're both correct. Yeah. I've had nine pets <laughs> oh, okay. over the years. Well, oh, when you include, like, um, Dogs. Okay, let's see. I've had three dogs, two rabbits. Hamster. Never had a hamster. I know my sister has a it's either a hamster or a guinea pig. I can never tell the difference between the two. It's basically the same thing. I think guinea pigs are bigger than. Okay, yeah, I think so. Yeah. And then plenty of fish over the years. I, I feel like every kid has fish. Yeah, they up do. Cause Cause like the it's easy to take you. It's easy to take care of them. You don't have to walk them. You can try <laughs> to walk them, but. <laughs> I don't think they'll survive. <laughs> but that is how you play Heart Lower Tom Edition. Thank you, Pam and Noah, for coming by to play. You're welcome. No problem. Definitely get you on another one. But I see our time is up, and that does conclude today's episode of Kane's Corner. I would like to thank all my guests from today's show. 
And I would also like to thank everyone working in the control room as well. And lastly, thank you to the viewers for watching. Also, be sure to stay up to date with the media suite and follow CETV, WCAL, and the Cal Times on all of its social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, if you have not done it yet, subscribe to our YouTube page, CETV Sports One, for all future content as we continue on throughout the semester. I'll be back with another new episode in about two weeks' time, so be sure to tune in for that. And thank you so much for being a part of my final season. And until next time, please remember to stay safe, stay kind, and as always, stay beautiful. Bye, everybody. Thank you.